Good morning. We had a we had a Georgia blizzard last night. Quarter of an inch of snow. And I'm not even sure how I was able to, able to get here this morning. There was there was this much snow on the roads. Oh well, we're here. Just kidding, people from the south. It'll be okay. Anyway, um, I did find a little bit of snow this weekend. My wife and I uh, went out to the Cleveland area and went skiing. Apparently they have skiing there. With, uh, with my sister and brother-in-law out there. So that was kind of fun. I took a little video from the weekend. Here you go. Which one do you want to go now? Oh, uh, oops. <clears throat> so we're doing a little skiing here. It's, there's no snow other than there's slopes, but that's okay. Let's see how good I am filming myself while I'm skiing. There's the wife. Two figure eights. Oh, oh. I don't know if we caught that or not, but it was good. Yeah. You're recording? I am recording. Oh, great. Thanks. Wave. Say hi. <laughs> well it was kind of fun to get away for the weekend and uh, we had had a good time so anyway we are back to work in the shop here it's a little quiet around the farm this week so i told you guys last week my dad went up north to my sister's to help with a house project and putting a beam in for her he said he was going to be home this weekend while well, i talked to him this morning and he said maybe i'll be home by wednesday so um so he's gone phil is gone he went to florida for the week so it's just me here today uh, Brock should be around tomorrow, so we'll get him back to working on this. And uh, I have I have a lot going on this week, and yet not a lot at the same time. So today I've got some errands to run. I've got to go, um, yeah, a couple different places, bank, post office, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then uh, I have an, another uncle, not Phil, who is a retired CPA. He kind of does most of our farm book work and stuff. Well, he goes to Florida for the winters now, and he called me last week and said, hey, can you update our QuickBooks and put all the checks from December in and make sure all that's updated? So I'm going to have to figure that out this afternoon, which means some computer work time. And uh, there was something else that I had to do today. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I don't know how much time I'm going to get to work on the planner here today is what I'm trying to tell you. It does appear that we got it cleaned up fairly well. It's not perfect by any means, but we got the heavy dirt off of everything down here, except for the side of that closing wheel. Um, but we need to fold those row units down and wash those off yet. Maybe that'll be what we do today or I'll get a chance to. Um, and then tomorrow we can have Brock keep working on all of these row units. And the other things that we need to do is start taking apart some of these uh, gauge wheels and the openers and measuring and seeing if we need to replace anything and whether they need to be adjusted, all that stuff. So I might take one of those apart today, show you how all that comes apart and works and what kind of stuff that we are looking for. And then uh, uh, we'll know, you know how much needs to be done to it. If we got to order a bunch of hardware and parts, we can do that. Or uh, I'll show Brock tomorrow and he can, he can go through and, and check all of the rest of them if the one that we take apart today seems to be relatively good shape. We just still have to check everything. Another thing that needs done today, you guys know I've been working on getting our chemical order put together. I've pretty well got that whether I need it, I think. I'm waiting for Dad to come home to just run everything by him and make sure that what I'm thinking makes sense. And he is the one that sprays. 
most of the time, especially the pre-emerge stuff early. So I want to make sure that, you know, my plan is something that he's willing to do and follow. Um, and then we'll get that place. But on a similar note, we need to uh, figure out what we need for liquid fertilizer. So all of a starter that we put on our corn is a liquid. Um, it's, a, it's a 1034 o but it's got some ATS in it to get some sulfur and some zinc added to it. And I add a little bit of boron. Um, and so we need to figure out how much of those products or that product that we need to have on hand. And uh, that means we need to, one, know how many acres and what our rates are gonna be. That's the easy part. Two, measure how much we have left. I am pretty sure last spring I drained the starter tank planting the last field of corn or maybe replanting one of the fields of corn or something. So I don't think I have anything left, but we're gonna come out here in the cold in the snow and do some measuring and uh, I think I've got a little bit of ATS left and maybe oh, well, our 28 tank is full because we got that in the fall so let's do some measuring all right so this uh, center tank is our starter blend it's empty I'll open the valve there but I'm pretty sure yeah that tank is empty that one there has the ATS that's ammonium thiol sulfate uh, it's sulfur and nitrogen basically and we've got a little bit in there not a lot but I'm gonna measure the depth and then we can uh, calculate it out from there how many gallons are in it we're gonna call it 33 inches it's a little more than that but probably doesn't, yeah thickness of the bottom really should call it 32 round down all right okay so roughly we're gonna call it 1500 gallons of ATS that's in that tank it's 10 gallon or a 10 foot diameter tank I figured two and a half feet uh, it was 193 cubic feet. Uh, that'd be 1,443. We really had more than two and a half. So uh, we're going to call it 1,500 gallons in there. So now that I know how much uh, of the ammonium thiosulfate and starter really that we have on hand, um, I can come back to this spreadsheet. This is my planting outline and guide, and it's got it's got all of our fields listed on it and what crop and how many acres and the planting rates. And then over here, eventually, I'll make some starter recommendations, uh, pr uh, variable rate prescriptions up. But I can pretty well guesstimate that it's going to be about what our average is. So we put about 15 gallons to the acre of starter on, and that's a blend here of a couple of different products. Um, this 11520 is a blend that we usually buy as our starter. It'd be like 1034O that's diluted down with some other stuff in it. Um, ATS, zinc, boron, and those will get tweaked depending on prices and what things look like. Um, but then it calculates out how many gallons of those products that I need. So the 6600 would be the ATS. The 13, 14,000 there would be the, the 12250. And then we've also got a chart here for wheat where we're gonna need 1,800 gallons ATS for wheat, and then this is 28, that's a separate deal. But uh, So basically I need roughly a little under 9,000 gallons ATS and what was it, 14,000 gallons of starter. So we can figure that out and then uh, I, I put those in here, what we need, and I'll get my prices from the different suppliers and we'll figure out where and how much and all of that stuff, but where we wanna get it from, and we'll go from there. I should, I should also note that um, our, so there's three different liquid products that we use a lot of. Uh, it's the, the starter product now, uh, which either, the, like I said, 1034O or this 1225O that's got some zinc and sulfur in it, uh, the ATS, and then 28. And 28 is simply 28% nitrous. 2800O is the analysis on it. And the reason we're not dealing with that right now is because we've already got the 28 in one of the tanks out there. It's full. We took care of that last fall when prices were pretty good on it. Um, now, you might ask, why did we fill up the 28 tank in the fall when the prices were good, but not the ATS and the starter? Well, the ATS and the starter does not uh, like the cold weather. So those are always a spring delivery product after it starts to warm back up because the, the fertilizers will kind of salt out or some of the stuff will settle out of them in the tank if it gets too cold. And so we don't bring those in and store them over winter. The 28 is fine. That will store through cold temperatures, no problem. In fact, a lot of people use it for winterizing their sprayers or planters or liquid systems. They'll just pump the fertilizer through it because it doesn't freeze. Um, 
but so that's why we're able to, to do that in the spring or in the fall, the, the 28 in the fall. The other ones we have to wait until spring fill, which means we usually get prices for them here uh, in the winter, January, early February timeframe. And, and we'll prepay for them now. And then once the weather starts to warm up the end of March, first couple weeks of April, uh, they'll, they'll truck that in and deliver it and put it in our tanks out here. Okay, now that I've got the uh, fertilizer stuff figured out or how much we need, I'm just waiting on some prices. So I'm gonna go do some running around. Although it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so the bank and the post office probably closed. So we'll have to do some more tomorrow, but we can get, uh, get the other stuff I gotta do done. So we'll see you guys back here probably after lunch. All right, I am back here. Um, before I go and work on the computer for a while more, doing the QuickBook stuff, let's take one of these row units apart. I'll show you that a little bit and how uh, this works. We'll do some uh, measuring on the opener wheels to see what kind of wear we're looking at and see what all else we think we might have to do to this. We are gonna pick this row unit and for a couple of reasons. One, it's easy to get to, but also because it's behind the tires, both on the planter and the outside dual of the tractor, which means that it's the one consistently planting into the hardest ground and will have the most amount of wear, the four that are behind the tires. So we're gonna check that one. Um, basically, we've gotta take this gauge wheel off and on this planter, we have what's called an RK uh, gauge wheel kit. Um, basically, it changes this arm and the way that it mounts a little bit, so it's, it's a little different. And I think, I can just take this bolt out and then that whole thing will come off of there. But I'm not 100% sure. I haven't taken these ones apart and it's different than what's on uh, my corn planter. Okay, so Phil plants most of the beans, uses this planter. Good grief. And so that's why I don't know this stuff quite so well. Uh, but we'll go over adjustments and stuff on these when we put it back together. But you want this uh, gauge wheel here to basically rub on these opener blades. But you don't want it too tight, you don't want it too far away, and so this kit gives you these shims to help move that in and out, which uh, the stock or standard arms that John Deere has can get uh, worn and wobbly and not work very well. And that's why we upgraded and put this kit on here a few years ago. So I'm gonna set this off to the side, and then this arm should slide right off like that. So now we can see our, our opener discs here. You can see I didn't get all the dirt out from inside, but that's okay. Um, those shims there we're gonna leave in place. In fact, these ones here, I can probably just kind of loosely put this back in, but I wanna know where it was set so that it's a little easier to put back together. So we'll just kind of leave that like that. Um, Okay, now I want to take one of these blades off so that we can measure it a little bit easier. So there's a, a rubber cap on here we've got to get off. I might need to get a screwdriver to pick that off. Oh, there it comes. And then we've got a nut on there. Now there's a left-handed and a right-handed depending on which opener you're doing, which side. I believe this is the standard right-handed threads. The other side's left-handed, but I got to get a socket to get in there. Somebody put stuff on way too tight. Ugh. All right, now we can spin that off of there. Come on, there we go. Okay. And then that comes off. Ooh, that might be a problem. A broken rivet. There is a spacer shim that goes in there, so we'll make sure we don't lose that. There's actually a few of them. Um, but then you can kind of see the inner side of the row unit. And this piece here with this John Deere on it, this is the seed tube. So when the seed falls out of the meter, it goes down through this tube. There's a sensor right here that counts it as it passes, and then it falls out of the bottom here. This metal piece here, this is our seed tube guard that uh, basically it, it does a couple of things. One, it protects this seed tube and holds it in position so it doesn't wiggle around, and it keeps these blades 
from pinching together too tight. You can see this wear on the side right here. And it kind of helps form the bottom of the seed trench. So these blades are turning and they are on just a little bit of an angle so that they touch in the front and then they kind of separate as they go past there. Uh, and that, that essentially just, it pushes the dirt out of the way to create a little V trench that the seed then falls into. This is our seed firmer. It basically, the seed falls out underneath it and it pushes it down and makes sure that it's firmly planted in the bottom of the seed trench. So, and then the, the closing wheels follow up and make sure that it gets dirt put back on top of it. This stuff, for the most part, should be all okay. We may have to adjust this screw that changes the tension on this, but other than that, that's okay. We'll pull the seed tubes out and clean them, which will get a lot of this other dirt and stuff to fall off too. But what I'm concerned about is the diameter of our seed disc. So I'm gonna get a tape measure and we're gonna measure how big that is. I am pretty sure, new, these are 15 and a half inches across. Ooh. Maybe they're only 15. Ours measure just over 14 and a half. So, what that means is they have some wear to them. Now remember, this one's going to be worse than all of the other ones, so we may actually do another row just to see how those are, but um, yeah, those may need replaced. There's also a bevel on this edge that once that is kind of worn off, they say to replace them. This one, it's certainly not a smooth bevel like it was when it was new, but it is still um, a pretty sharp edge, so... Just from that standpoint, I don't think they need replaced, but they are getting pretty worn. Yeah. I'm gonna do a little research and dig and make sure what the book says and maybe talk to Phil, see what he thinks, but those might get replaced. So I moved over a couple of rows from where we were to over here. This row is kind of between the tires, the wing, and the mainframe, it never basically runs in a wheel track. I wanted to see how much different the wear is there. And it's fairly substantial. So measuring straight across this one, we're at like 14 and seven eighths. Not quite. I'll measure in a couple different spots. More than 14 and three quarters though. So if that's the case, and it's just the ones behind the tires that are worn that much more Maybe we won't replace them and we'll run these for another year and then replace them all. I really, I, we could just do the ones behind the tires, but I'd rather do them all or not, you know, all at the same time or not, not any of them and run them again. So I don't know. We'll see. The other blade that we need to be concerned about wearing is this one. This is our, what they call a no-till coulter. We're not really no-till, but we like running these these wavy coulters, they kind of create some nice loose dirt right in front of our openers. And uh, uh, I, for the most part, I think they do a pretty good job, but um, they do wear as well. And I'm not sure what the original spec on these is, um, but I'll measure them and see what we've got now. That one behind the tire was about 14 and a quarter. This one, is actually a little smaller, just barely over 14. Uh, this one also, the edge is really uh, kind of wavy, or not wavy, but that sticks up there. It's like the edge is kind of peened over and quite worn on those. Yeah, those are actually more likely to get replaced from what I'm thinking. They're not quite as critical as the seed openers and you don't want them to run as deep. So when we set them, we'll actually take a piece of quarter inch plywood or something that's quarter inch thick, set it underneath those and then set the openers on the ground and uh, make sure that, that the openers touch and that those wheels are just barely touching the wood or, or can still turn because you, you want them to be set about a quarter of an inch above the seed trench depth. Getting some computer work updated. I got a seed truck here. I gotta go get it unloaded. Pretty sure we're getting corn and not very much of it. And they sent me an email last week about it. I think it was just a box and 
a half a pallet or something like that, but we'll get it unloaded here. A box and a little pallet. That guy, that truck driver. Now he didn't have to push a whole bunch of boxes to the back of the truck because I was, I think, his first stop or one of the first ones and uh, they were already in the back and there was only two pallets, but uh, he was good. That, he called me an hour and a half ago to tell me he was coming. He called me when he pulled in my driveway to let me know he was here and which door I wanted him to back up to. Pleasant, easy to talk to, didn't complain. That, that, that's what you want in a truck driver. The last truck driver I had that brought me some beans was having a rough day. So, anyway. Okay, so I'm back down here at the farm. I have pretty well wasted, not wasted, I've been productive. I just haven't been doing anything that's been super uh, filmable, let's say. So, uh, but I've got a lot of my computer work done. I uh, did get a couple of quotes back on some fertilizer stuff, so I was putting together some of those numbers, and I got the QuickBook stuff updated. Uh, I did find over in our parts bin over there, we've got one new no-till coulter, um, which meant that I could measure what the new size is. New, they are 16 inches in diameter. So when I measure this one at just over 14, that is quite worn. Um, I have a feeling those are going to get replaced. Yeah. Um, the openers, though, they are 15 new. And uh, with the exception of the ones behind the tires that I took off there, they were pretty close to that. So I haven't decided on those just yet. I called Phil to see, get his opinion on some of this stuff. We are going to replace the no-till coulters. The seed discs are still not 100% sure on, but we're probably gonna leave those. Um, I wanna pull another one off on the other side of the planter over here and check it. Last year, he had a bearing go out on one row, and so he switched them and put new blades on that row, put the old ones off, and then we fixed them there in the parts bin there. But just on the off chance that the one row I pulled off that was still in pretty good shape, like almost 15 inch diameter blades, happened to be the same row he put new ones on last year, we're gonna check another one. And if they're close to 14 and a half, like the ones in the back here, we'll probably put new ones on the whole thing. Otherwise, we'll run them for at least another year. So that's the plan. We also need to go through and check, um, make sure all of the bearings are good. So on all of these row units, we've got lots of bearings. We've got bearings on the closing wheels. We've got bearings on the gauge wheels, the ones that I took off down here. That one's, that one's good. We've got bearings on the seed discs. And then there's bearings in the no-till coulter. So this, we can pull this hub off and uh, pack some grease in there if need be, or tighten up the bolt. It's basically a wheel bearing in there. So um, we'll at least check all of them, make sure there's no play and that they're all tight. Uh, we also want to check the play in these parallel arms. So this this arm and this arm are called the, the parallel arms on a planner, and they basically float up and down to keep the row unit parallel with the, with the ground. And uh, there's some bushings in here, in the front and the back, that can wear, and you get some play, and then everything just kind of shakes and moves, and you don't want that. So uh, we'll check those. Same kind of deal here on the closing wheels. There's this bushing right here. These get worn and then there's play side to side. This one here is not too bad, but the ones on the outside seem to be worse. That's quite a bit of slop, so we may put new bushings in there or there is a company that makes a kit to put an actual bearing in there and tighten that up and you can almost see right in there the the slop so we want to fix that but like i said before we also want to check all of our gauge wheels make sure the contact area is right and all that stuff after we get those done so like i said before last week this planner she's going to be here for a while that is however it for me today i'm heading home Brock, I think, will be here tomorrow, so we'll get him keep working on some of this stuff. I should have more time to help working on it, at least maybe get the no-till colders off and some of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to have to get some parts ordered for it, too, so I'll try and do that in the morning. If I get it done quick enough, they might get here tomorrow. Not that we need them tomorrow, but you get the point. So, um, yeah, 
Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. If you have any questions and comments, leave them down below. Be sure and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that like button for me, please. Thanks everybody, have a good night. On my way out, there was a box on the front of the office porch. You guys, thank you, but holy cow, that's a lot of cookies. Wowzers. My kids and family co-workers appreciate it. Thank you so much.